Sakaris and Price from the Wall Center and joined by the Daily Hives, Rob Williams, once again. Rob, the hockey guy, uh, and uh, Rob, the Canucks keep rolling as the new year begins. They keep high rolling as well. Uh, there was uh, some star-studded guests uh, in the VIP seats. Francesco Aquilini coming down with the great unwashed and and <laughs> watching games with the public. Uh, but he had some, he had some uh, good wingmen, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, with the public, sort of. Uh, you know, with the with the other uh, the elite, I guess. In the, yes, uh, the, the elite the public. Seat. Yeah. But but yeah, no, like close close by to the non-elite seats, because of course there's you know only a handful of of rows uh, in that new VIP section. It's funny, I was trying to spot him from from the press box, and there was another guy wearing like a similar colored jacket to Gretzky and I, I thought initially that that was that that was him and that guy was sort of sitting by himself and he was sitting in the he was sitting in a black seat that was not a VIP seat and I was like they didn't put Wayne in the in one of the, the plush <laughs> extra leg room uh, seats uh but no yeah he you know w- with uh with Francesco Aquilini um which I which I think always makes for good uh meme material uh and and also of course Chad uh, Kruger from Nickelback, and yeah, I, I think that's I, it, it. Made for for fun social media content, I think uh, on on a on an otherwise also fun you know fun first period, and I think the last couple of periods were a little bit more forgettable as the Canucks cruised the victory. Hey, Rob, you you wrote about the fact that Gretzky was there. Were you surprised at the reaction that he got? Like, I know he's the great one. I get it. I know his place in hockey royalty. I understand. But I think he's been back to Vancouver before. Obviously, Torch in uh, 2010 at the Olympics. And uh, this is also a guy that torched the Canucks for, you know, most of his yeah. career and every other team. I think I was surprised at sort of this visceral reaction. It was almost like they sprung it on the crowd. But I don't know. Maybe people were just in the holiday mood. But, like, the standing O, uh, yeah. it, it felt a little over the top, quite frankly, for me. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, I, I think we saw something similar with Marcus Naslin as well, right? Where where I thought, oh, I was like, wow, okay, this is a little bit more than the average ovation. I think you find that a bit more when it's a when it's a bit of more of a more of a surprise, I guess, to the fact. I mean, obviously, you know, Jeff you spotted him at, at the morning skate, yeah. so you know, I had a pretty good idea he was going to be there. But I don't know that that everyone in the that arrives at the rink is expecting to see. Uh, the the great one in attendance. So I think the the surprise factor I think adds to it. I think if you'd shown like things in the crowd, well, like well, you know, I, I saw Henrik at Whole Foods last week, right? Like it's you know, it's it's not as much of a of a of a big surprise. So I think that added to it. But I would agree, yeah. And and I thought it was good. The the, the Canucks game presentation team they kind of kept them on the on the screen for a little while. So you know. You know, you could see Wayne at first just sort of doing the polite waves and expecting, I think, the camera to pan away. And it just stays on him. And he's like, well, I guess I better stand up here, uh, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it was fun weird, to see. But all of my face <laughs> did the weird wave with all <laughs> Well, whoever was in the, in the row behind them was also very social because uh, Chad and Wayne uh, were talking with them as much as they were with Francesco, which, again, as you mentioned, Rob, made for some interesting memes because it, at times it looked like they were completely excluding Francesco, which was... Mm, chef's kiss um but uh it was uh, a lot of fun to see him and as you mentioned it was uh, an interesting game big first period but in the end uh the other uh takeaway was that Thatcher Demko continues to climb the ladder for goaltending wins it feels like he just arrived and he's already joining the top handful of Canuck goaltenders uh taking over from uh his tutor uh early in his career in Jacob Markstrom uh, who's next on the list so it's uh it's pretty unbelievable yeah, this wasn't on my radar at all. I, I saw Blake. I saw your tweet about it that he tied Jake Markstrom. Ninety-nine wins now. His next will be a hundred. Uh, he's accomplished it in fewer games. Just uh, 194 games played. Markstrom played 229 games, and uh, he's closing in now on on the all-time list. Where you know, like you say, like it, it feels like. Demko's still kind of a young goalie, but you know he's he's 28 now. He's he's you know he's well into his career, and he's 10 games back of the immortal Dan Cloutier for fourth on the all-time list. So he he uh, you know barring injury he, he'll pass Cloutier this season, 
And, Seems inevitable uh, like, he gets to third, right, guys? So isn't it inevitable he at least well, gets to third? I, I think, you mark this one down for a future poll question, but look, he's 28. He's sitting on 100. His next win will be 100. Roberto Luongo is the king uh, with 252. So does Thatcher Demko pass Roberto Luongo? Like five 30-win seasons if he's to extend his contract here. Like, I think it's eminently doable that Thatcher Demko could, I mean, 531 seasons with where this team is right now, uh, with where he is. So, you know, yes, Kluche is next, and then it's Richard Bruder, and then you've got Kirk and, and Roberto. I mean, those are the guys at the top of the heap. But I, I do wonder, because uh, I saw that the other day too. I thought, okay, 100 wins, but really it's more about can he get to 252? And I think, yes, it's quite possible before all is said and done, if he sticks around as a Canuck, that Thatcher Demko will have more wins than any other goaltender. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at it like, Richard Berter is at 126. So, you know, again, barring injury, he should pass Berter yeah. for third by next season. McLean's at 211 and Luongo at 252. I don't think he'll be able to get to those numbers by the end of his current contract. Right. And like you say, if he if he extends and plays another, what, how many, I don't know how many years it would take, like maybe another five years, um, I think he could, he could uh, start to reach uh, Luongo and and yeah, there's very every real possibility that if he if he sticks around Vancouver and plays well into his 30s, um, not even well into his 30s, like you know just like 33, 34, like like he should be able to to be the all time uh, leader in in wins by by Canucks goalie. Let's see if he can get to the to McLean's record for. Uh, Playoff wins, though that's 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 the one I think Canucks fans would like. To see. That will be the mark, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, by the time a lot of people uh, listen or watch this, uh, they will already know the first Canuck All Star uh, as that gets announced uh, mid game on the uh, first night of Eastern contests. But somebody's probably going to be left on the outside looking in. Like, what what do you think the maximum number that any team will have? Like, no team can have four, can they? Are they going to bring four? Like, given the the roster size, like, there's no, not, there's nobody it's, that's going to have four. It's in members. Toronto. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe the Leafs, but all the Leafs. I mean, is it possible that they have four? I mean, if it's only three, there's two guys that are probably going to be disappointed, or at least on the outside, as, as Jeff has chronicled. We're not sure that Elias Pettersson will be disappointed if he doesn't have to go, but there could be two guys that are on the outside for sure. Yeah, I tried to do some digging a few weeks ago, just asking the NHL, like, what is the format this year? Because they're, you know, they're doing the, the, uh, the, the draft, they're bringing the, back, the draft format back, but they're doing the four team tournament. So like, are they picking player? Like, are they picking an even number of players by division? Are they doing conference again? Does it even matter? You know, I know every, every, team is getting at least one player so maybe they're not they're not you know maybe dividing it, it up but yeah, yeah maybe they're not doing that so the less division by you know by divisions or conferences the better for having extra players but once they pick the the first 32 there's only 12 more spots and you know, McDavid and Dreisaitl are going we know that like that'll be, that'll be a duo and you know as Jeff you know like having having it in Toronto, they always give extra player. you know, is the whole core four going to go from Toronto and be in the all-star game? I could see that. Um, so I, so, you know, Toronto is going to get a bunch of extra players. Really the Canucks should have, like they have five all-star worthy players. I, I don't recall the last time, maybe you probably have to go back to the 2011. And I, even then I'm not sure you had five all-star caliber, you know, seasons like the Canucks have at this moment. For me, Quinn Hughes, you know, I, I guess we'll see if he, if he's the guy. That would be my guess is that Hughes is the, is the first guy chosen, and then after that, how do you, how do you pick? Like like with the year that Bester's having, how do you not have him in there? But you know, you've got Miller and Pedersen are top ten in NHL scoring. I don't know how you leave them out. So Demko is probably the easier guy if you look at his numbers. I think to to leave off. But but even then, it's like he's a, he's a, a Vezina candidate this far into the right. season. Yeah. Hey, guys, we've reached the stage where all-star game nods are not contract points, right? Like he, like with fan voting and such, you, you don't get to go to the general manager when you're negotiating a contract and say, I'm a four-time all-star, right? Like, or, or they can't use it against you, right? Like that, that, that ship has sailed, hasn't it? 
I think it has. It's certainly all-star game appearances because then at the end of the year, there are the season ending all-stars as well. I think those ones maybe hold a little more water, but right. yeah, anytime you introduce fan voting into something, there's no way that you can uh, you know, bring that uh, into your uh, contract demands or any sort of uh, negotiations with the, with the hockey club. It's no. lost so much of its luster, even just for like, you know, you used to be able to say like, a, you know, a 10 time all-star. I think they even did that when they introduced Gretzky in mentioning the all-star games he's, he's been to. And, you know, they, they mentioned that like in the NBA they mentioned how many times LeBron James has been an all-star that means something. Now it's like, at, you know, you're an all-star if you, play on a bad team and you get a guaranteed spot but if you know if you're playing you know poor Ryan Nugent Hopkins like how to try to make the all-star game with with McDavid and Drysdale like how do you do that um so yeah I but think it's it's, just, it's watered down across the board I'm watching NFL games and they're saying pro bowler blah 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 I'm like that guy's <laughs> in the he's a pro bowler like because everybody declines so they go down to the the third tier to get pro bowlers right? Rob so. you bring up a good point like you said you had to reach out to the NHL to sort of seek some clarification and I guess we'll get it in due course here but you know we're now inside a month from the all-star weekend in Toronto they talked about the overarching changes but the fact that the three of us do this for a living we don't know the format, and I'm still totally unclear about this new revamp skills competition that apparently there's a million bucks involved, but like we still don't know like how are they selecting the players from the 44 that are going to be there for All-Star Weekend? Like I have no idea who's going to take part in the skills competition, so Elias Pedersen could go to the All-Star Weekend, but he may not be part of the, the skills competition, or Brock Bester, one of your leading goal scorers. Like, I'd love to see him pick targets and and do his shooting thing like he did when he was the MVP a couple of years ago down in Tampa. But like, I, I don't think the league has done a good job at all of messaging what this is going to look like for the average fan. And ultimately that's the people that they need to tune into uh, the skills competition and, and the games themselves. Totally agree. Yeah. I mean, like how, like this should be the time where you're hyping, hyping everything up. Like I've been wanting to, I, I mean, I was, I reached out because I wanted to write about like, this exact topic of like who's who's going to get snubbed from the Canucks, and then I was like, I don't think I can even write about it because I don't even know the rules of the game. <laughs> so you know, you're waiting, waiting around for it, and you know, it's still, uh, you know, right as they're going to start announcing players, we don't even know. Um, yeah, it's that that's going to be an interesting thing too. Like, with there's you know, there's every real possibility that there's not a single Canuck player participating in the skills competition, which for me is the most fun part of all-star weekend right like that that's more fun than the game like that you actually get some some cool moments i think in the skills competition and and yeah i i like that they're trying something different with it and and trying to get some some real competition in it and and with money on on the line i think that you get more of a chance for that and i think even just by by keeping it to just a select group of players you're going to just have the players that really want to be there and really be involved and they're going to be involved in a lot of competitions rather than you get your one event you get your maybe second event and then you're done and i don't want to be a conspiracy theorist but you do wonder how much teams lean into the league and say listen can you take so and so if it's 50 50 take so and so not not this guy because he's exhausted and blah 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 blah. like i i honestly like miller and, and Pedersen should be there but i wonder if the three for the canucks end up being besser hughes and demko because they're sort of category leaders you know like like it'd be weird like besser's not as good a player as miller and, and Pedersen, but it'd be weird not to have the third leading goal scorer <laughs> in the entire league at the all-star game I, I can't recall if Miller's played in an all-star game before. I don't think so. I, he, ha he hasn't with the Canucks. So I do think that that would be, you know, when we're talking about whether this means something or not, I think for someone like JT Miller, Perhaps. you know, age 30, this deep into his career, you look at it, how many, you know, you know, how many points he's piled up since he's joined the Canucks. He's been there, you yeah. know, up there with the, the leading scorers, him and Pedersen. I think this would really mean a lot to JT Miller, uh, whether you admit it publicly or not, I'm not sure, but, I think this would definitely mean a lot to Miller if, if he got to go. Yeah, I mean, he had his 99-point season the other two years ago. He didn't go then. I think Thatcher Demko was their rep that year in Vegas. So, uh, you know, overlooked a, a little perhaps. And obviously he had a big finish that year after the All-Star break. But uh, uh, knowing JT a little, like, I wonder, like, yeah, on one hand, sure, it would be nice to be acknowledged. The other hand, the trip to Toronto, 
uh, you know, to have to go halfway across the continent uh, where you could have a week off. And uh, I don't know. I, I, it'd be interesting to get inside his brain and sort of get, the, you know, the real truth about uh, where he stood and, and how he felt about participating in an all-star week for all of them yeah i mean I, i'm sure all of them want a bit of a break although you know <laughs> they they got a long christmas break a long holiday break so and the schedule works that they start out of the break in carolina so you're heading east regardless that's true too yeah, yeah like you know i, I do last, want you had to I, get to florida and then i think where did they started out in jersey i guess uh out of the all-star break last year so you, you sort of factor some of that in as well in terms of the logistics involved I, I do wonder if, if Pedersen wants to go at this time, you know, because yeah. you just know the questions are going to come from and of, and of all places to have the all-star game, to have it in Toronto. Toronto. Yeah, like it's going right. to be the, the media day is going to be maxed out with people just asking about the contracts. Uh, you know, maybe he gets a question about Chicago. I don't know. Um, so I think if there's one guy that might be like, ah, oh, maybe it'd be a good year to sit out. Maybe, it'd be, <laughs> maybe it'd be better. So I'm sure he'd, 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 he'd be honored to, to go otherwise, but uh, the media day, I don't think would be a, be a favorite so if, for uh, for someone in his position this season. Or, or how about they just say to the Canucks, here's the number hit that number and it's out of the way by the all-star break. And we don't have a big circus. How about that? Maybe that happens. Be nice. uh, Rob, thank you for this. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll be looking for the latest in uh, the offside vertical and daily hive. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Sounds great. Thanks guys. This clip brought to you by Betway must be 19 plus to play. Please play responsibly. 